Hi and welcome to this lab session. In this lab session, we will see how to import multiple data sets from S3 to Redshift. You will find this method much easier this time. Previously, we have seen how to import the data set for the sales record to the Redshift as it is avail available here. This data set will be used in the next section where we will be performing some SQL queries on the data set in the query editor. So I have already uploaded the two dataset files in the S3 beforehand. So I will go to the AWS glue and create a crawler to bring in those two dataset files. So I will go to add a crawler. And over here, let me name it as split it data import. Click on next. Over here, we are okay to go with these options. Now click on next. The default location is S3 and we will browse for the file location. As I have already uploaded the files. So here are the four different files. I am interested in the first two files to upload. The dispatch items detail and the item sales detail. So I will select the first one at first and select it. Go ahead and click on next. But this time I will use the other data source too because we need the other file to be uploaded as well. And click on next. Again, the data store is S3. Now let me browse the folder location for the second file. And this time I will select the item sales details. Previously, we selected the dispatch item detail file. So go ahead and select this and proceed with the next. Over here in the sidebar, you can see the chosen data store shows you two links for the selected files in the AWS S3 for this crawler, the item sales detail and the dispatch details. So we don't need any more files. I will select uh, the no option and click on next. Let's select the IAM role over here, which will be the AWS Glue service role. This actually connects the S3 to the Amazon Redshift. Click on next. We will uh, go with the run on demand option. Click next. Now I will create a new database and let's name it as splitted DB. As it makes me recognize it easily that it will contain the splitted dataset file. So now create the database. Click next. And we are done and good to go. Finish it. Now here we are on the crawler page and our crawler is created. Let's run it. So the crawler is running as of now. Alright, so the crawler has stopped and the database splitted DB has been created. This time you can see under the table added, we have raw count as two. Reason being that this time we had two different dataset files and we intended to create two different tables in our database. Let's go to this database and look for the tables. So here are the two dataset metadata tables created for us. Let's click on the dispatch item details table. So here you can uh, see the schema available. It has the order ID, the unit sold, order date, region, and the country information. Let's go back and see the other table as well. In this, if uh, go and edit the schema, here we have the item type. Sales channel, order priority, order ID, and other sales related details linked to the accounting of sales. Now we have successfully imported the metadata of the data set available in S3. Next, we need to do is copy these data sets to the Redshift. So, for that, we will go to the jobs and create a new job. So during the crawling process, we imported the two datasets in a single go using a single crawler.
but for the job part we will have to create separate jobs for each data set table to be copied to the Redshift. Let's first create a job for the dispatch item table. So I will name it as dispatch to Redshift. So this will actually fetch the data set from S3 to Redshift. Select the IM role as AWS Glow service. Leaving rest of the settings to default and click on next. So now we have to choose the data source as we are making a job for dispatch table. So I will select the dispatch item details CSV table and click on next. Go with the change schema type and click on next. This time in the data target, we will click on the create table in our data target option. Select the data store as JDBC store and the connection we select as Redshift sales connector. Then we give the database name which is Redshift and it is dev. Click on next and here it matches the schema for you automatically. So we will save job and edit script. So here we are onto the script. You can see the database name is dev here. One thing we need to do here is to change the table name. I want the table name in Redshift to appear as dispatch item details. So I will delete the underscore CSV from the table name here. Now save the job and run it. Okay, so the job has been executed. Let's close it and go back to Redshift. Let me refresh this page of Redshift. Now click on the public schema and here you can see that now we have two tables. The dispatch item details table is also available here. These were the columns inside this table and we have brought them here with the help of the job and specifically with the JDBC connection type. Let's go back and do the same job process for the second data set we have which is the item sales detail. Click on add job and name it as item sales db to redshift and choose the AWS Glow service role. Leave the settings to default and click on next. Data source this time will be the item sales detail CSV and click on next. Transform type will be the same and select the create table in your data target select the JDBC data store connection be this redshift sales connector and we will write in the database name as dev click on next okay so we have this schema which is good to go click on save job and edit script all right so this is again uh, I have the same database and I will rename the table name to item sales details and I will delete uh, underscore CSV. Now save the job and run it. So the job has been executed. We will go back to the Redshift and reload the web page. All right, to let's select the public schema. And uh, here you see that the third table is now available, which is the item sales details table. And under it are the column names related to it. So this is how you import data from S3 to Redshift using the JDBC connector without creating any table in Redshift prior to import as we did previously. This data set will be used in our next section where we will learn to join the data sets using SQL. In our next section, we will be looking at how you can perform the SQL queries in Redshift using the online query editor.